Well, there is a major study on COVID vaccines that has found a link between some of those vaccines and a small increase in heart, brain and blood disorders. This is according to a study by the Global Vaccine Data Network. The vaccines connected to those disorders include Pfizer, Moderna and AstraZeneca. The organization says that this is the largest vaccine study to date. Still, another study finds COVID vaccines prevented an estimated 19 million deaths in the first year that they were available. So joining us now is Dr. Matthew Sims. He is the Director of Infectious Disease Research at Coral Health. Thank you for being here with us. Happy to be here. So this was a big question that a lot of people had with the rollout of the vaccines. A lot of people even now to this day still debating the safety of the vaccines. Uh, what do you make of these findings in these studies? You know, I think we have to be very careful not to blow this study out of proportion. Um, the numbers of increased uh, uh, conditions that they found, like Guillain-Barre syndrome, et cetera, um, were very small. You're, you know, you're talking at like 0.8 per million, which means for the 99 million people, you know, across the study, less than 100 cases. Um, compared to the number of people who were saved by uh, the COVID vaccine. In addition, one of the things we know, one of the reasons they looked at these particular uh, conditions again is because COVID itself causes them. And if you look at the amount that um, of these conditions that occur in people who get COVID, it's much higher than the numbers found in this study. The other thing to know is several of these were linked really specifically to one vaccine or another. Um, especially the, uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine, as you mentioned, um, was the one that had the Guillain-Barre link, and I think it had the transverse myelitis link. That that vaccine's not available in the United States um, right now. Now it was here for research purposes; they were trying to, you know, study it, um, but that's not one of the the ones in the U.S. The other thing to realize is one of the things they they said is that they couldn't find a consistent link with every dose of the vaccine. So they saw it with some doses, not with others, um, which makes it very hard to, to assume that this is necessarily from the vaccine. These sort of conditions, a lot of them are caused by viral infections. And, you know, other viral infections in the community could cause increases at different times of the year. Yeah, and the researchers even said that the association between the vaccine and those adverse side effects that they're listing is actually may not possibly the root cause of some of these conditions. I know that's confusing exactly. for a lot of people because a lot of people were so concerned about taking it in general. Uh, how do people need to process this information? You know, the, the thing to know is that, as I said, if this risk is really there, it's incredibly small, right? Over, uh, you know, billions of doses have been given out at this point. Um, it's estimated that you know, more than half the world's population has gotten at least one dose of these vaccines. Um, these are incredibly, incredibly small um, risks compared to the risk of COVID. If you remember what COVID did when nobody was vaccinated and nobody had any immunity to it, um, you know, the number of deaths, the number of other conditions that followed COVID, the number of people who got long COVID syndrome and are still suffering from it, 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 it dwarfs these minor things. So the thing to remember is the COVID vaccine is incredibly protective against the severe consequences of COVID. And it saved a lot of lives, as you mentioned in the beginning. Yeah, it did. We lost millions of people during that time. Uh, when you look at the rollout of a new vaccine, obviously in this case, there was a race to get something out there to try to protect sure. people. Is there often some risk associated with a new vaccine or is this something that's unique yeah. to the COVID-19 vaccine? No, it's, it's absolutely not unique. In fact, if you remember back in the 70s, the swine flu vaccine, which got rolled out very quickly, they had the same exact concern about Guillain-Barre syndrome. They thought they saw a, a, a spike in the number of cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome um, to, to this day, people still worry about that because of flu vaccine. But when they went back and looked, you know, there are some studies that actually say that while, you know, there was a small risk for the vaccine for Guillain-Barre, it actually prevented more cases of Guillain-Barre than the increased risk because flu itself can give you Guillain-Barre at a much higher rate than uh, the vaccine could. Similar to COVID vaccines, right? 
while you may see an occasional issue with somebody having a side effect, um, the the sheer amount of disease that it prevents, both COVID itself and the associated conditions, is much higher. Yeah, something you mentioned earlier sticks out. You know, you look at the risks here, a lot of people talking about this now, but you also put into the equation the risk of the exposure to the virus itself. When you balance yep. it out that way, it leaves you with that conclusion. Absolutely. I'll tell you, I've gotten, you know, I, I couldn't wait to get the first vaccines back when they first came out. I couldn't wait to get my first booster. I have gotten every single booster as they've come out. My wife has, my kids have. I, you know, this is a, a vaccine that um, I have, you know, can easily say um, I can stand fully behind and I've gotten each one of them and so is my family. Okay, so in closing, you don't feel like there's an immediate risk for people and there's no cause for no. mass alarm? Absolutely not. You know, I still recommend getting the COVID vaccine um, and it's still helping people. All right, Dr. Matthew Sims with Coral Health. We do appreciate your time. Happy to be here.